If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. One of the key ideas that is present in this question is that whenever you take a charged particle, like a proton or an electron, and you place that charged particle in an electric field, then that charged particle will experience an electric force. And let's take a look at the equation of that electric force. And so the equation simply tells us that the electric force that's experienced by the proton or the electron is equal to the magnitude of the electric field multiplied by the magnitude of the charge. So for example, for the proton, the electric force is going to equal the electric field multiplied by the magnitude of charge on a proton. And then for an electron, the same thing will apply. We'll have the electric field multiplied by the charge or the magnitude of the charge on the electron. Now, of course, for both a proton and an electron, the magnitude of charge is equal to the elementary charge, E, which has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So again, that's the magnitude of charge in both a proton and an electron. So we can actually replace the magnitude of each charge with E. Now the question notes that we can neglect the force of the particles on each other. And what that means is that the total force on the proton is simply this electric force right here. And the total force on the electron is this total force here. And so we recall from physics one that the total force acting on an object will equal its mass times its acceleration. So we're gonna take each of these total forces that are acting on the respective particles and simply set them equal to the mass of the particle multiplied by the acceleration of that particle. So that'll happen for both the proton as well as the electron. Now, as we will see later, it's going to be useful to solve each of these equations for the accelerations A. So in the first equation, we'll go ahead and divide by the mass of the proton and that's gonna cancel out the mass of the proton on that side. We'll do the same thing for the second equation. We'll divide both sides by the mass of the electron. Now, before we refer to those accelerations, let's come back to the diagram. The proton is released from rest, and because it's released from a positive plate, it's gonna be repelled, and that's gonna cause it to move in the rightward direction. And the electron also is repelled from the negative plate, and that's going to cause it to move in the leftward direction. Now, eventually, as the electron travels to the left and the proton travels to the right, they're going to cross paths. Their x-coordinates are basically going to be the same. What we'll do is we'll define this location as an x-coordinate of 0. And our goal is to find this x-coordinate right here, where the two particles cross paths. Now, the proton travels a distance that we can call xp and the electron travels a distance that we can call xe. And from kinematics, we recall that the position of a moving particle is going to equal its initial velocity multiplied by its time plus one half times its acceleration times time squared. Now we're assuming that both particles are released from rest, which means the initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second. That's going to eliminate this term right here. So that kinematics equation will just simplify to one half times acceleration times time squared. And of course, this equation would apply to both particles. So for the proton, we can say that xp is equal to one half times its acceleration. Now let's remember that its acceleration was the electric field times the elementary charge divided by the mass of the proton times time squared. And then for the electron, we'll have xe is equal to one half times its acceleration, which we also found earlier, times time squared. Now, which of these x values are we actually looking for? Where the question says find the distance from the positive plate. The distance from the positive plate is that xp. So we are looking for xp. Now, the challenge here is to somehow solve for xp given these two equations. If we go back to the diagram here, we know that the distance from this plate to this plate was stated in the question to be five centimeters or 0 0.05 meters. From here to here, 
we have called that XE, and from here to the positive plate, we have called that XP. So we can see from that diagram that XP plus XE will make 0 0.05, and we can write that out. And what we'll do is solve this equation for XE. So let's go ahead and subtract the XP from both sides of the equation. And when we do that, we can see that XE will equal 0 0.05 minus XP. So we're going to make a substitution. We're going to put this expression for XE into this equation right there. Now, one way of proceeding here in order to solve for XP is to take these two equations and divide them. So if we divide the left-hand sides and divide the right-hand sides, we're going to have the following result. Let's look at this very carefully. So on the left side, we're going to have XP divided by 0 0.05 minus XP. And on the right-hand side, we'll notice that the one-halves will cancel out because one-half divided by one-half is just one. The time squareds will also cancel out for the same reason. In fact, the capital E times little e, those will cancel out. Now be careful here, you're going to be left with a 1 in the numerator there, as well as a 1 in the numerator here. Maybe we'll come off on the side and look at that more carefully. So right now you have 1 over the mass of the proton, divided by 1 over the mass of the electron. We know that when we divide two fractions, we have to do something called keep, change, flip. What that means is we keep the first fraction the same, we change division to multiplication, and we flip the second fraction around. So that becomes me over 1. Now when we multiply fractions, we just multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. So this is just going to be me over mp. And of course the masses of the electron and proton are known. You can look those up in the back of your textbook. So let's go ahead and fill those in. So we've filled in those masses. We could also then just pick up our calculators and divide the two masses. And we're left with this unfortunately small decimal. So to solve for xp, we could perhaps put this over 1. I think it's actually easier in this case to do a little trick here to solve for xp. It turns out when you have a fraction equaling another fraction, you can actually flip both fractions around. So on the left-hand side as well as the right-hand side, we're going to invert these fractions. That's going to leave us with 0 0.05 minus xp divided by xp. And that's going to equal, and if you flip this fraction around and do 1 divided by that decimal, you're going to get about 1836.6. That's just an easier number to work with. Next, we can multiply both sides of the equation by xp. We'll add 1xp to both sides. And finally, we'll divide both sides of the equation by that 1837.6. And when we do that, we can see that xp turns out to be roughly 2.7 times 10 to the minus 5, and that would be in meters. And that is indeed the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Remember, you can send in your own picture to the email address that's shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it.